Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. <laughs> My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more Mad But Whole mixed with some relationships too. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. It's all very cheeky, but you already know that. And let's crack on with today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from OK Transition 1878, who says, Am I the arsehole for having a craving of something that makes my partner sick? I, 25 female, recently found out I was pregnant with my partner, Lyle's 26 male baby. We've been together for three years and we live together. Lyle has ADHD, which he refuses to get treatment or medication for. He's pretty normal about 85% of the time, so I haven't really pushed it. One thing that really affects him though is sensory problems. He has a few, but the biggest one is bananas. He cannot stand the smell of a banana or the taste of banana. He's accidentally eaten something with banana before and ran to the bathroom like a child to throw it up. If we are somewhere and someone is eating a banana, he will claim that he can smell it in the room and make us move with the threat that he will get sick. If we don't move, he will start gagging and make himself throw up. And I've seen him start shaking too. This has happened in public before and it's extremely embarrassing. Anyway, let me tell you what happened. I was really tired, pregnant and hormonal yesterday and while I was watching my show, I had a craving for a banana which I normally avoid when around Lyle. But pregnancy cravings are just too strong to resist. He was going to get groceries from work, so I called and asked him to get some bananas because I was having a craving. He started begging me before he even got them to not eat them in the house, and I just got fed up and told him no, that I was carrying around his child, and the least he could do about it, since he's not the one having to nurture the damn thing in his stomach, was get me a banana. I'd read online that this was probably the baby's way of telling me is deficient in potassium and that all I could really stand to eat at this point was the damn banana and I don't want to deprive it of what it needs. He argued back and forth asking me to go eat it outside at least and out of frustration I just started crying which made me feel embarrassed. He finally gave in to calm me down and brought it home. I'll admit I was still really mad and upset from our argument on the phone when he came home and I, in that moment, couldn't face getting up and going to the kitchen. When he came into the living room and sat on the couch, I asked him to peel it, cut it and bring it to me. I really didn't think that was a big deal, but he blew up at me and told me that I knew it made him sick to even smell or touch. I told him that plenty of people have foods they don't like and he either needs to grow up or seek help for his illness because he's acting like a child and his problem with bananas is completely abnormal. We argued a bit more and he finally got up, yelled that he was tired of my bullshit and left the house. He hasn't been back yet. I get his issues are a sensitive topic for him and when I was talking to my friend about it, she said she has an autistic sister and what I did was a bit messed up. So Reddit, am I the asshole? Look, I'm not going to criticize you for wanting a banana because of a craving, you know, you're not only asshole for that, but for the way you talk about your partner's sensory issues here, you're definitely the asshole. And to even try and make him peel and cut it in some, which felt to me, and I'm not sure if I read that wrong, it felt to me as some sort of, you said you couldn't get up and off the couch, but it felt like a power move to me. And some of the other language that you used in this post is normal about 85% of the time ran to the bathroom like a child and you find it extremely embarrassing that he needs to grow up or seek help for his illness because he's acting like a child and his problem with bananas is completely abnormal. I mean, come on now, read that back to yourself and, and how are you not going to think that you're the arsehole? And there was a turn of events in this particular post because the partner did find the post and they actually commented within it, which we'll cover in a moment. But Rick on PC says, I was with you until you made him peel and cut it for you, knowing how he reacts to it. You're an arsehole for that. Just peel and eat the damn thing. And I'm guessing you're not far enough along that you can't grab a banana and toss it afterwards yourself. You're the arsehole. Compensate says, you're the arsehole. Wow. 
You keep saying that he's acting like a child, but you are the one who acted out of petty vengeance. I like bananas, so it's hard for me to relate to that, but there are certain dishes that absolutely repulse me. He bought you the bananas to his dismay because he felt bad for you that you cried. And how did you reciprocate him? You wanted to humiliate him, making him do something he despises for your satisfaction that you made him do that. I also don't like it when people repeatedly write, he's acting like a child. It seems like people try to diminish one's needs, preferences, and wants by saying that. You can't evaluate his maturity. It seems like you don't respect him as a partner. Moreover, I would act like him if I were in his position. Who wouldn't? Nut Michelle says you're the asshole. Cravings and pregnancy don't give you the right to treat your partner like shit. If you think he's such a child and exaggerating his sensory issues, why did you choose to have a child with him in the first place? Yoshi Pikachu replies that saying, you're the arsehole, get over your fucking self. As an ADHD adult that has ADHD children, people like you are the worst. Sensory issues are very real and you telling him to grow up is pathetic. Heaven forbid that your unborn child also has ADHD because you know it is hereditary. Also, who cares that he's unmedicated? Being on meds does not help with sensory issues. MM172 says you're the asshole. You are pregnant. That does not make you the grand high empress of everything or entitle you to use your condition as an excuse to make other people miserable. It'd be one thing if you'd asked him to get over his aversion enough to bring the food home, but torture yourself and prepare one for me was multiple steps too far. And as for your little just get over it lecture, I hope you don't expect mercy when you hit the part of pregnancy where you're avoiding foods or trying to get your kid to eat because I wouldn't be forgetting this anytime soon if I were him. And one more from Agnar Krakenhammer who says not the arsehole until the last paragraph. Yes, he should be seeking help for his medical issues but he is still compromised and bought something for you that you know for a fact triggers his issues. There is zero excuse to force him to cut and peel a banana for you. Yes, pregnancy is hard and you do need support during this time, but he supported you by getting you the bananas. You decided to get petty and go the extra mile. For that, you're the asshole. Edit. Go see the boyfriend's comment. OP fucking sucks. Hard. Now let's move on to the boyfriend's comments to find out what he says. So Kyle, not Lyle, comes in and says, Hey guys, it's Kyle here, Jessica's boyfriend. Yes, she literally changed my name from Kyle to Lyle and thought that was good enough. One of her friends sent me this and I want to set the record straight because I am beyond pissed off. First of all, I want to address this refuse to get treatment or medication bullshit. I was diagnosed with ADHD as a fucking child. It took until college to realize I needed to adapt things to how my brain worked rather than slap medication over it and try to pretend I'm neurotypical. I did well in life. I graduated on the dean's list in college and I'm doing well at my dream job and thriving as an ND person. Do I still forget about the laundry sometimes or have a hard time focusing on certain things, especially when I'm tired? Yes, and it pisses Jess off. Does it mean I have issues? Fuck no. This medication BS started almost immediately after we found out Jess was pregnant, like a month ago. It was an approach like, Hey Kyle, I noticed XYZ. That seems to be hard for you. I think you need help with that. I was instead first asked if my ADHD was going to spread to the baby. Literally, spread was used. And second told that I should probably take this as a chance to get it under control because she didn't want the baby to grow up dealing with any problems. Now let's get to the sensory aversions. I've been through therapy to manage it. I can now after years touch paper towels without my gums hurting, but bananas I just cannot deal with. People who aren't ND and don't deal with sensory aversions don't understand that it is literally physically painful in many cases and genuinely makes me sick. I don't make myself throw up. My body naturally reacts like that. Jess has told me many times how embarrassed she is by it and how it affects her and her solution is exposure therapy. What she doesn't realize is that's essentially the same thing as torture to me. There are some cases like the paper towels where I've realized it's just a little too common. 
but bananas are not common enough for me to sit there and torture myself just to make her feel less embarrassed next time she wants me to try a smoothie her sister makes and lie about the ingredients. Finally, other details I think are important. I'm just going to bullet these because I'm going to write too much otherwise. Jess was binge watching a show on Netflix and wanted me to bring her a banana while she watched the show on the couch. We are in a one bedroom apartment and the smell will probably be there at least for a day. We'd gotten in an argument about my ADHD and me not having meds, CP2 and 3, the day before. So this didn't seem like a sudden craving but more a cruel jab since it was still tense. The pregnancy wasn't planned and no, random commenter, I didn't fucking rape her. She was on birth control and it failed. She wasn't too sick to get up. She was too lazy and pissed and told me to go cut it for her because I just want to watch my show in peace. I'll admit I snapped when she insisted I cut the banana and just do this one thing for our child to show I care. As if she didn't go out and quit her job pretty much immediately without even telling me. And now I'm dealing with all the household expenses while she shops. I've also been caring for most of the house because she's already claimed being too pregnant from morning sickness. So yes, I was fed up with her bullshit. ADHD is not an issue. It just makes my brain work a little different. I'm so tired of the ableist bullshit that's come from nowhere. Edit. I didn't realize bananas were such a common aversion. Everyone always told me it was weird. I say we outlaw bananas. <laughs> but now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation and what would you do if you was OP? you as the partner let us know your thoughts in the comments below and before we move on i just want to thank kiri over on twitter for suggesting that story thank you and our next story comes from our very own subreddit r slash mark narrations from puerto rican diosa who says am i the arsehole for not giving my brother's girlfriend fifteen hundred dollars after she stepped in dog poo in my yard and it comes with an update as well this is my first time posting and what better place to do it but Mark Narrations. The two kind. I have four dogs, one Husky Mix, one Black Lab Mix, one Husky Mix and one Purebred Yorkie. We live in the country and our home is on 15 acres of land. All but two acres are wooded. Along with four dogs, we also have four cats, two snakes, an iguana and ten hens. To say we are a pet family is putting it lightly. Cheeky. <laughs> Last weekend, we hosted a pool party slash barbecue to celebrate my 50th birthday. Aside from cleaning the house, deck and pool, we also went around the property and cleaned up all the dog poop we could find. Even with the cleanup, I still put up some signs around saying, beware of potential dog bombs. We also told people when they came that while we cleaned up all that we saw, there is a chance we may have missed some poo and suggested they use caution, especially in the areas where the dogs tend to frequent. The party went on and everyone was having a blast. There were two occasions where my daughter found a mound and she cleaned it up immediately. Well, fast forward three hours and suddenly everyone stops as we hear someone screaming and crying. My first thought is that one of the children were injured. A bunch of us ran to the side of my house and there we saw my brother's girlfriend hysterically crying and hopping on one foot. When I walk over to her, she starts screaming at me and telling me her sneakers were ruined. Apparently, she was walking in the wooded area of our property and stepped in a pile of, still steaming, poo. My daughter ran in and grabbed a pair of her slippers and handed them to my brother's girlfriend. Then I took her sneakers, brought them inside and cleaned them up. I handed them back and apologized. She went on complaining about my stupid mutts and how they should all be put down because they are disgusting and ruin the environment. She accused me of being a horrible housekeeper and that I did this on purpose because I was jealous she could afford expensive things, and I couldn't. After that little speech, I, not so nicely this time, apologized again, but also reminded her that I did clean up and warned everyone to be careful and put signs up. That's when she told me her sneakers were the Union X Air Jordan 4. Off noir. I have got a clue about sneakers. I'm, I'm sorry, you sneaker fans. And cost her $1,500. She told me my dogs ruined them and I needed to buy her a new pair. I told her I would be happy to pay for them to be professionally clean, but I would absolutely not be paying her $1,500. My brother tried to tell her that her sneakers were two years old and after I cleaned them, they looked almost brand new. She didn't want to hear it and stormed out. 
The next day started the onslaught of everyone texting me and giving me their unsolicited opinions. It was pretty much split down the middle, with those saying she is being ridiculous and those saying I am wrong. I am good friends with her mother and spoke to her about the situation. She said to me, Beth is a spoiled brat, thanks to her father, and you should not pay her for anything more than a professional cleaning. I feel really bad, but I think it is insane she wants me to pay $1,500 for her shoes because she stepped in dog poo on my property. If I was not able to get them cleaned or if the poo got inside, then I could see her point. But I just don't think she's being reasonable. So since my friends and family are split, I decided to get some unbiased opinions from you all. Would I be the arsehole if I didn't pay her the $1,500 she spent on the sneakers two years ago because she stepped in poo in my yard? And I'm just going to cover a couple of comments because I want to get straight into <laughs> the updates. Remember, these comments are on our subreddit as well. So this one's from Pandalin78, who says, not the arsehole. Shit happens. <laughs> you cheeky so-and-so. And Irish Bridget says, on a farm, quite literally. Hell, I grew up in dairy country. She should be thankful she didn't step in a still steaming cow pie. And that gave me a flashback to when I was in um, school and we was like, we was on a, a school trip once and we're staying away and it's like farmer's fields all around and we all went running down this hill and I went flying and I tripped over I, I think I just lost my footing because I was running too fast and my face went straight in a cow pat <laughs> it was a bit crumbly as well crumbly but moist in the middle <laughs> lovely <laughs> damn you bringing up those memories I'm trying to get out of my head but anyway the update says I'm not sure how to update so I figured I would just edit my original post and add the update here so First, I want to thank everyone for your support and comments. I didn't really think I was wrong, but friends and family were split about maybe 60% to me to 40% Beth on the issue at hand. So my twin girl suggested I should get some Reddit judgments. Now on to the update. A few things happened since my original post. First with her father's encouragement. Beth had me served with a summons four days ago to small claims court on October 5th, 2022. She is still seeking property damages in the amount of $1,500 and emotional distress damages in the amount of $3,500. Apparently, the max one can sue for in small claims court is $5,000 and she is going for it. And yes, you read right, $5,000 because she stepped in dog poo. Unfortunately, the court date falls on my girl's 16th birthday. So I have to reach out to the general district court to see if I can change the date as we will be in Puerto Rico the entire week. My twin girls, 15, want to beat the shit out of her. What can I say? Latinas are hot-tempered. But of course, I won't allow that to happen. Anyway, second, Linda, Beth's mum, was livid when I told her about receiving the summons. She threatened Beth that she would cut her off if she doesn't drop the suit. Linda and I have known each other since sixth grade and occasionally chatted on Facebook since 2008 but we did start to get close when our kids started dating. Linda reminded her daughter that she is the one with the inheritance to give and not her broke-ass father. Linda's words, not mine, so if she continues down this road, Linda told her she will rewrite her will and split the inheritance between her, other two children, those two awesome, and will leave Beth one dollar so the courts know she wasn't forgotten. Yes, one has to do that to show they have disinherited someone. Third, my brother warned Beth that if she took me to court over the Air Jordans, it would be done. But she thought she had him wrapped around her finger and he wasn't going anywhere, so she did it anyway. Well, little bro followed through on his threat and is now single. He said he immediately felt a weight drop off him when he realized how exhausting it was to be with her. Of course, Beth is blaming me for the breakup as well. She told my brother that if they do not get back together, she will hire an attorney and open a six-digit lawsuit against me for alienation of affection because I coerced him into breaking their engagement. Alienation of affection is an action that is brought by spouse against a third party alleged to be responsible for damaging the marriage, most often resulting in divorce. But they are not married and have never been engaged. My brother's wife passed away due to breast cancer seven years ago and has always said she will forever be his only wife. My brother and Beth have been dating for about two and a half years. Ugh. We'll have to wait to see if she drops the lawsuit and slash or if she brings another against me. The crazy thing about this is I'm sure you are all imagining Beth is maybe in her early 20s and probably the baby of the family. But she isn't. The woman is 36 years old. 
and is the eldest of three siblings. Anyway, that's my little update. We'll keep you all updated as things progress. And hold up, there's more. Not sure why I put my hand up when I said hold up then in a real sassy way. But anyway, the update continues. Hi all, some of you read my post about my brother's girlfriend who stepped in poop in my yard and demanded me to pay $1,500 to replace, even though I got them completely clean. Not sure if this is how I share the other post, but here we go. Well, I found out my brother's now ex-girlfriend hates me. Also, why she is threatening to sue me if my brother doesn't get back with her. Well, she confessed to her mother that she fears if the, her relationship with my brother ends, then she will lose access to my husband. Yes, you read that right. My friend invited me over to her house for coffee and chit chat. When I got there, her daughter was there sitting at the kitchen table crying. And so was my husband. I'm not going to get into everything that was said because my head is still spinning. But yes, for those who have guessed it, she and my husband have been having an affair for nearly nine months now. And the reason she hates me is because he refuses to leave me for her because he loves me too much. Mm -hmm. It's more like if he goes, he doesn't get to take my money with him. My husband said a bunch of stuff that I really don't remember or didn't hear. I immediately left because I am Latina. We have hot, hot tempers. And if I do not leave right away, I would have broken this girl and my husband. When I got home, my husband showed up a few minutes later and I calmly told him to pack his bags and get the fuck out. He tried to argue and plead, but about 30 minutes later, my brother ran into the house. His ex-boyfriend called and told him and basically told him to get the fuck out and off our farm before he beat the crap out of him. My husband did as asked and my brother came to me, held me and I broke down a little, but was more angry than anything else. I then went to my room and slept for almost 16 hours. I woke up fresh and renewed. There is no ifs, ands or buts about it. I am divorcing him because he destroyed our almost 30 years of marriage. He knew cheating was the one thing I would never stand for. No marriage counseling, no attempt to reconcile. He is dead to me. I took a shower then immediately called my lawyer to start the paperwork. Thank goodness our family lawyer insisted on the importance of prenup before we got married. My farm has been in my family for over a hundred years, as well as the home and money. There was a cheating clause in the prenup, so while sure he will be paying me a pretty penny, it doesn't make up for the deceitful, horrible way he hurt me. But most importantly, he gets nothing from me. All the farm, home, and money my bro and I inherited. My three adult late teens are furious and want nothing to do with him. But I told them that he is still their dad and I'm okay with them still having a relationship with him. And not go no contact for my sake. However, I also let them know they are entitled to their hurt and feelings. So I will not force them to have a relationship with him. I've emailed my husband, gave him my lawyer's info and told him all communications go through the lawyer from now on. Well, sorry for the very short update. I'll be leaving the mainland soon to get away and will not be back on the internet slash reddit for a while. But this is how a funny story about dog poo leads to heartbreak and anger. Thank you for all the comments and support on my previous post. I leave Thursday so if I can I will try to respond to some questions but I doubt I will have the energy to. I am off to the beautiful tropical island my family is from to soak up the sun and get spoiled rotten by my titi, auntie in Spanish, mum sister, bro will run the farm for now. Puerto Rican Diosa is signing off for now. Holy shit, the way a story can turn, man. The first one, I was sort of like chuckling away to myself. Then we got to this one and I know he's cheating on you. And I'm so sorry that's happened to you. I, I, I'm really lost for words from that original post to this. I, I don't know what to say apart from I'm really sorry. But at the same time, I got to give you credit for how incredibly strong you sound in this post. You're just like, nah, you had your fucking chance get the fuck out sort of thing you know what i mean and your brother sounds like an amazing person as well and all i can really do for you now is wish you the best and enjoy that sun and and whatever comes from this point going forward i truly wish you all the luck and love going forward so much love to you now what do you guys make of this one let us know your thoughts down in the comments below I really enjoyed OP's spine in that particular story. Solid. Let us know your thoughts 
And just a huge thank you for spending your time with me today. Getting involved in the stories, your love, support and time always means the absolute world to me. Never forget that. And don't forget at the very end of the video, there'll be a couple of playlists there that you can click on and it will scroll through automatically for you. Thank you so much and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Much love. But then along came a time when you crushed my dreams Oh yeah, you played me like a fool And you made me believe that the line between love wasn't thick enough to read Oh yeah, you see we in despair, crime everywhere You're selling false hope cause you just don't care Nah, uh, you just don't care Nah, 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 you just don't, just don't care